No, skepticism is awesome. It's, like a, <laughs> it's a superpower. It's like you can see the matrix code. Uh, my name is David Silverman. I am president of American Atheists, and I am really happy to be here today. My second uh, time presenting at Dragon Con. Last time I was here, um, I talked about what the movement looked like uh, from that perspective, and we've had a lot of changes since then. Uh, so what I'm going to be doing today is I'm going to talk about um, the fight that we have in front of us. And the fight that we have is something that we can win, it's also something that we will win. And I'm going to explain to you today why uh, we are looking at a fight, we are looking at a battle that we're all going to live to see it come to pass, I hope. Um, I have been an activist since I was, well, 30 years old, so that's about 15 years. And in that time, I've seen such an evolution in this movement. And looking ahead at what we have, uh, I have a very, very positive outlook. So I'm going to give you a little bit of a, of a well, a synopsis of my outlook of the movement uh, as president of the United uh, of American Atheists. Um, I love that picture. I, I was telling, uh, I, I was explaining earlier that uh, I practice for all of my appearances on television and I practice, and I practice, and I practice, and then Bill O'Reilly comes out and says something stupid. And I give him a face, and the face goes viral. So I'm going to, uh, <laughs> so I'm going to, to, to start out by shouting out to all the Redditors out there who actually contributed to this presentation, uh, whether or not they knew it or not. Like that. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit today. <laughs> What do you think, with the beard or without the beard? Without. Without. I'm going to tell you a little bit today about the atheism movement. Um, I'm going to talk very briefly about the history of the atheism movement. Uh, what do we want? What is the problem that we have today? I'm going to tell you in one chart what the problem that atheists have today. I'm going to just put the entire problem of the atheist movement in one chart, tell you about what American Atheists segment is in the market. Tell you a little bit about how our opposition lines up and how well they've done in the past and why they're defeatable. Why they're defeatable by us. And then I'm going to come out with the coup de gras. Who, got, who saw the last time I gave this presentation? I actually did spell it right this time. Uh, why we're going to win this game, why we're going to win not only uh, in the short term, but in the long term, uh, and uh, why, if you can read this, you are actually vital to the success of this movement. And I'll end up with a few final thoughts, just some words of advice, and then uh, this is not a very long presentation. I actually have shortened it for Dragon Con because it's 10 o'clock at night, everybody's tired, and you want to go out and party. So I'll shorten it a little bit, we'll take some questions, and then we'll head out. First of all, I just want to talk a little bit about the movement's history. There I am without the beard. <laughs> like I said, there's a lot of faces. Uh, a lot of people had fun with my faces, so I used a bunch of them. Um, Atheism is anything but new. Now, if you listen to the press, they'll call us the new atheist this and the new atheist that. Actually, we were first. Okay? Okay? Let's, let's get that off here. There's nothing new about atheism at all. We came first, and then atheists did a very, very bad thing and invented religion. That's what atheists did. We have to own that we did that. But it's anything but new. However, Ever since atheism exists, existed, we've never been wrong. <laughs> never. Now think about that for a second. Atheism has never, ever been proven wrong. Religion has never, ever been proven right. Not once. If just once we were proven wrong, we'd be done. Right? 
if anybody found a God that existed, we're not atheists anymore. I'm not an atheist anymore. Prove me wrong once, and we're done. Of course, it never happens. That's because we're right. Religion changes over and over and over again. Atheism stays exactly the same and is 100% right all the time. Okay. <laughs> hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> To those of you who don't know about America's history, I'm not going to bore you with it. A lot of times people say, well, we're a Christian nation. We're founded in, in, in Christianity. Uh, no, uh, we, we're right. Um, the America is founded as a secular nation. We have a secular constitution where God is not mentioned. Uh, if you don't know what the Treaty of Tripoli is, uh, really you should know the Treaty of Tripoli right off the top of your head, just in case anybody ever comes up to you and says, Oh, we're a Christian nation. The Treaty of Tripoli was federal law. It's the first treaty ever signed by America. It was signed under order of George Washington. It was ratified unanimously by the founding Senate and signed into law by President John Adams. And it specifically says that the government of the United States is not in any sense founded in the Christian religion. It is a smoking gun. It is a dead stop check mate on the we are a Christian nation argument, on, a, uh, on the founding fathers wanted us to be Christian argument. They wrote it out, voted on it, voted unanimously on it, and signed it first. So you should know that. Um, you should also, if you have any questions, read the writings of Jefferson and Madison. You should also read Darwin, Ingersoll, and Dawkins. I always mention Darwin, Ingersoll, and Dawkins because if you want to know anything about the atheism, a atheism over time, you've got to know those. And you also really should know Madeleine Murray O'Hare. Now, Madeleine Murray O'Hare is the person who originally uh, started the fight to take forced prayer out of schools. She was a divorced mother of two with very little support, almost no money, and over time, she won. And if you went to public school and you didn't say a prayer every day to Jesus, that's because of Madeline and her co-plaintiffs. Then she went on and she founded American Atheists, um, and I proudly sit in her chair right now. She founded us in 1963. Now, the atheist movement expanded since 1963, and there are many organizations, as all of you should know, uh, disparate organizations serving generally different markets. Uh, but now, like I said, as we're moving into this, this next phase of the movement, we're cooperating much more, we're growing, all of us are growing, all the organizations are growing, um, and it's a pretty exciting time. Now, what exactly are we fighting for? <laughs> they were starting to have fun after a while. Uh, we're, we're fighting for really crazy stuff here, folks. Very, 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 uh, you know, off the wall crazy stuff here. We're, we're looking for, thank you. It's really freaking hot. It's really freaking hot? Oh, yeah, it's it's thank you so much for getting that. You're like a god. Uh, ex except, you're, except you're real. <laughs> well, I have a brain injury, so I'm kind of like a judge. Yeah, there you go. So we're looking for equality, okay? And yeah, we have legislative equality now, but we all know that we don't have equality. We need equality in the hearts and minds of America's citizenry, and that's the big picture. That's what we're going on. We're looking for a, a country where you can say you're an atheist just as easily as you can say you're a Republican or a Democrat or a Jew or an Italian and not get discriminated against in your home, in your family, in your workplace, in your friend, circle of friends, period. That's what we're looking for, equality with a great big capital E. We're also looking for freedom of religion, which includes, of course, freedom from religion. We don't want to take anybody's religion away from them. We don't want to make religion illegal. That would be hypocritical, and nobody is looking for that. Certainly, American Atheist is not looking for that. However, you can be free, but you can't make anyone else pay for your myth. You can't hurt your kids, and you can't force your beliefs on anyone. Reasonable stuff. Those are our big pictures. 
And we get that through the separation of church and state. The separation of church and state is not just a buzzword. It is the only way you can achieve freedom of religion. There are two of the same thing. They're, they're, they're practically synonyms. You can't have freedom of religion unless you have separation of church and state. Every bit that the, that the church encroaches into the state is less freedom to choose that every citizen has. And that is exactly the opposite of what a lot of religions want. A lot of religions want the church and state merged. They might not say they do, but they do. Why? Because religion is weak. Religion cannot stand on its own. Religion needs the state to prop it up. And that's why we, already, that's why we have these battles. That's why we have the intelligent design battle. That's why we have church taxation. Or, or I should say lack thereof. This is why we have all these issues. Because religion can't stand on its own. They need the state. They need the separation of church and state to go away. The more it goes away, the better for them. <laughs> I told you that I was going to show you one chart with the problem with atheism. I told you about the problems with religion, but let's talk about the problems with atheism. That is not a circle. That is a pie chart. Can you see that little tiny sliver at the top at 12 o'clock? Can anybody see that little tiny sliver at 12 o'clock? Well, in, in America right now, there are about 40 to 50 million atheists. Now, when I say atheist, I don't mean somebody who's a hardcore conclusionary atheist like myself. I mean anybody who's without religion, even if they call themselves agnostics or secular humanists or brights or whatever, they're all atheists to me. 40 to 50 million nationwide. 40 to 50,000, one-tenth of one percent are involved in organized atheism. That is our problem. That's it right there, that one chart. If we can change that chart, we can change everything. Now, that little sliver has disparate names for itself. Like I said, atheists, agnostics, secular humanists, brights, uh, secular Jews, secular this, secular that. It's what's getting in our way. Think about something. If you ask, just find a, a Presbyterian. Find a Presbyterian. Ask him what his religion is. He'll say, Christian. Find a Catholic, they'll say Christian. Find a Baptist, they'll say Christian. Okay, find a secular Jew. They'll say Jew. Find an agnostic, they'll say agnostic. Find a secular humanist, they'll say secular humanist. We divide ourselves over nothing, over nothing, while our opponents unite themselves despite substantial differences. That's why we get polls that set, say that, oh, atheists are 1 to 2 percent. Now, we're not 1 to 2 percent. We're just 1 to 2 percent who call ourselves atheists. There's another 8% that call themselves agnostics. Another 3% that call themselves something else. That's a problem. And then those disparate names go to disparate groups. That's fine. All hungry. Because they're all fighting over that one sliver. Or at least they've been all fighting over that one sliver. And we've been stepping on each other. And of course, what do you do? The, the, something that American atheists did is we tried to take a, a big umbrella approach and tried to please everybody. And guess what? Everybody else in the movement tried to please everybody for that one tiny sliver of the movement. This is something that we've been fighting. And despite the fact that we've been going after this, there is still shame, there is still fear, there is still solitude, there are still people, tons and tons of people, all these gray people, well, a lot of these gray people who feel some degree of shame, some fear, some solitude, of, uh, some, some hesitation that they're going to have if they come out. 
That's a problem. American Atheists is going to change this chart. My big picture is to change this chart, at least to get that, that orange part, I don't know, visible, <laughs> would be nice. I mean, think about what happens, think about how much grief we're causing the religious right right now. What would happen if, if we doubled in size? And look at how easy that is. We're not talking about converting people here. We're not talking about turning, athe turning theists into atheists. I am putting absolutely no effort and none of American atheist money into turning theists into atheists. None. Because it's not worth it. I've got a great market right here of people who call themselves atheists uh, by one definition or another, but don't join. And there's more. Because this chart doesn't show you the tons and tons of atheists who call themselves Christians and Jews in the polls. The, pew, the church pew atheists. The people who say, yes, I'm a Christian. Do you believe in God? No, but I'm a Christian. They're atheists too. They need their eyes opened. And they're the people that we're reaching out to. Now, that's what American Atheist does. Or at least, let me tell you a little bit about how we're reaching out to them, I should say. Here's this guy. <laughs> Somebody liked anime. So, we have always been the Marines of free thought. Uh, the Emperor is naked and he smells bad. Okay? We're not the ones who couch anything. We're not the ones who go out and try and uh, kowtow to anybody. American Atheist is the hard ass. We're the ones who say what everybody else is thinking but won't say it because it's politically incorrect. That's all right. Everybody needs that. All theistic religion is a scam. Yes, all of it. And that's all right for us to say because it is. Now, some people might disagree with a little bit of that, but really, religion is a lie. It's no less of a lie, in fact, it's much more of a lie, than other scams like homeopathy. So, but they have this, this, this protection quality that they have. They, they have this, this shield of political correctness. Oh, you can't, you can't call religion a myth. Yeah, you can, and we do. All theistic preachers, therefore, tell lies. They might not be lying when they do it. They might not be knowingly telling lies. They might believe what they're telling. But they're still telling lies. Yes, all of them. Uh, and they're paid to tell these lies. And they're paid to tell these lies whether they believe them or not. And I have said many times that the more you read the Bible, the more you study religion, the more likely you are to become an atheist. I believe that. I gave a Bible to my daughter just for that reason. And we have to realize that religion is a scam and religion is a lie and that preachers are telling lies. Now, you might not like the way we're saying it, but that's what we do. Uh, religion benefits only the preachers and those who profit from it, mostly the politicians. Now, some people say, well, no, wait a minute. I have an aunt. She's really religious. She really benefits from, from her religion. She benefits from her religion because her religion convinced her that she needed the religion. That's what religion does. It convinces you that you need it, but you don't. If anybody needed religion, we would all need religion, and certainly atheists would need religion, and guess what? We don't. Okay, so we say this loud. This is our position. This is the American atheist position. This is how we do it. We say it loud. We say it often. And hopefully people will hear about it and think about it. Now, as I'm just going to shift gear here and, and, and talk about a little bit of history. You know about us. You know about our movement. Let's talk a little bit about history. Let's bring up the face first. There she is. 
Yeah, I'm, I'm not a pretty girl, am I? <laughs> so, who has stood in the way of progress? I'll go over this real briefly. Let's look at the women's movement. If you just look back at history, women's suffrage. Uh, who opposed that? A mm, bunch of people, including religion, who opposed equality, citing the Bible. God made Eve as a helpmate. Let's try um, African American civil rights. Oh, yes. Uh, who opposed that? Well, religion opposed it, opposed equality. Again, citing the Bible, Ten Commandments. Oh, LGBTs, religion opposed equality, citing the Bible. Look at that, I used the exact same phrase for each one. And what do you see over and over again with each of these? Religion loses. Religion loses. Progress happens. The LGBT community is about to get gay, gay marriage everywhere. It's going to happen while we watch. It's awesome. And what I want to get through to you with this chart is that so many people say, oh, religion is so big. It's got so much money, so much power. Every, all the politicians, they, they kowtow to the, to the religion. We can't beat them. That's crap. These guys lose all the time. They can't beat progress. But we have a few advantages, and we're going to use them all. Oh, I like this guy. <laughs> Let's talk a little bit about the atheist advantages, the movements for the, 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 the advantages for the atheist movement. So, you can find a whole bunch of polls, but here's the scoop. We got about 15% of the population. That's more than Jews plus Hindus plus Muslims plus Buddhists combined and doubled. That's a lot of people. And we are the fastest growing segment in all 50 states. Check that out. Think about that. Think about the power there. Think about how much power the Jews and the Muslims and the Hindus and the Buddhists have. And we have more than that many combined and doubled. Why? We don't have organization. We don't have, that, that's the reason that they have the power and we don't. We don't have organization. That's fine. We can figure that. We're in vogue. Who saw that article? Who saw that coming? We're in vogue. We've got international pressure. Religion now going extinct in nine different countries, including Canada, rock and roll, all those, organ all those countries. Uh, the world is getting uh, smaller. They're exerting financial pressure on us. They're coming in. They're exerting social pressure on us. Religion makes itself look bad, but we can help. We like to help. We all like to help a little bit. But religion is making itself look bad. That's the point. How many times have you opened a paper and found this, uh, this, this new anti-gay activist <laughs> having sex with men? You, you can't get away with it. You can't get away from it. Um, they're making themselves look bad, and we just have to help them just a little bit. Uh, we have donors and celebrities now coming out of the closet. We've got people like Bill Gates. We've got people like Todd Stiefel. We've got people like Ben Affleck and Angelina Jolie, all coming out of the closet. Remember 10 years ago when Ellen DeGeneres became the first outed homosexual woman on television? We got lots of atheists on television, lots. We've got a nice, solid head start. The internet is the best thing that's happened to atheism ever, ever. You know, when I was young, when I was, uh, I've been an atheist since I was a child. And I tell this story a lot. Um, I was the only atheist I knew. And I got on my bike and I had to ride two miles to the local library. I took out the one book at the library on atheism, The Case Against God by George Smith. It was the only time I had exposure to other atheists. I was alone. This is impossible now. You can't feel like this anymore. You can't experience that anymore. Anybody can get on the internet and find literally millions 
of atheists and millions of pages of information. The whole isolation is gone. This is why we're growing so fast. The isolation is gone. That's why we're not a fad. That's why the growth is a trend. Because the internet is not going to go away. And as long as the internet isn't going away, the communication's going to be there. We're not going to be lonely. We're going to be empowered. And here's the best part, the sleeping giant. 20 to 30 percent of the 20 to 30 crowd is non-religious. I actually think it's more than that because that does not include the atheists who call themselves Christians and Jews. 20 to 30 of the 20 to 30 crowd. In 20 years, now remember, we're growing, not shrinking. So in 20 years, we're going to have more than 20 to 30 percent of the 40 to 50 crowd. Think about these numbers. This is why we're going to win this. We're growing faster and they can't stop us. This is why it's a fight we can win. Here's my friend again. All right, now I already told you about the uh, American atheism and the movement and how we're doing it. Now I'm going to tell you how we're going to close it off. What is American atheists doing to do this? <laughs> it's very creepy, yes. It's very creepy. Uh, <laughs> it's very creepy. What is American atheist doing? Whoever saw this, did you ever see the billboard? This billboard went viral. This billboard was the first billboard that we put up in front of the Lincoln Tunnel. It's, um, I put it up right after I, I became president of American Atheists. That billboard, uh, for those of you who can't read it, says, you know it's a myth, this season celebrate reason. That was put up in front uh, uh, on a huge billboard right outside the Lincoln Tunnel where 100,000 people cross every day very, very slowly. Um, <laughs> I actually had a line of news reporters in the office in, in, at American Atheist Headquarters in Cranford, New Jersey. Um, we have th this billboard was not only on pretty much every news station in the country, but it was also in nine other countries, this one billboard. We spent $25,000 of members' money on this billboard. We got $10 million worth of publicity from that billboard. But that's just one billboard that we put up. And this is one of the things that American Atheist does. We promote our awareness as a movement. The existence of the movement, the breadth of the movement, I'm going to talk about the breadth of the movement in a bit, and our movement's concerns and issues. We're the ones that, like I said, say what needs to be said even if it's not quite popular. We protect rights via winnable lawsuits. Let me tell you a little bit about the lawsuits that we have. Uh, in Utah, they're trying to declare the cross secular. Okay? Think about this. And, and, and this, is, this, is, this is something that really makes me angry because what they're trying to do is they're trying to use, I hate saying this, I hate this, they're trying to use dead cops as a shield, literally. They're putting big metal crosses up to memorialize dead cops. And they're saying that the crosses are secular. In other words, that you could put a cross up for a Jew or a Muslim or an atheist and they wouldn't mind. And the reason that they're trying to say that, the reason that they're trying to get this all secularized is because that way they don't have to worry about equal access. That way, when little Timmy unfortunately dies at school, they can put a secular cross in the auditorium. They can put a secular cross in any courtroom that they want, memorializing anybody they want. They can make the cross a secular uh, monument and a ubiquitous monument, putting it everywhere and not have to worry about equal access, not have to worry about the First Amendment ever again. And in order to protect themselves from lawsuits, they're doing it for dead cops. So who wants to sue dead cops? Well, we didn't want to, but we are. 
and we're going to win. In fact, we did win. They appealed. We won the appeal. And now we're going to the Supreme Court with this. And that's one very good example of a very unpopular fight that must be fought. It's almost as important as that World Trade Center cross case. If anybody, you, 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 you're familiar with the World Trade Center cross case, right? So you're not. Well, OK, so the World Trade Center fell. And what they did, the World Trade Center was comprised of I-beams, OK, and cross beams and T-beams. And they took one. They took one of the surviving ones. And they placed it in front of a church. They, they, they straightened it. They cleaned it up. They trimmed it. And they mounted it, and they put it in front of a church, and they carved Jesus all over it, and all sorts of prayers and everything. And now they've installed it into the World Trade Center Memorial in a religious ceremony. They sanctified the ground. They blessed the area, and they put this cross in. Guess why? Because the cross represents everybody. Yes, the cross represents all those who died. They are not allowing anybody else to put in their memorial, in their religion. They are actually saying it's the first time that we've got an actual religious icon installed in a religious service on public land with public money. And in order for us to stop it, we have to sue the World Trade Center right before 9-11's 10th anniversary. And there's no way around it. And we're doing it. And that's, it's, it's going to be a fight that we have to fight. Because what's next? A lot of people say, oh, it's so harsh. Oh, it's, it, why don't you just let this slide? You need to understand, the Christian right doesn't let things slide. They use everything as precedent. If we put a Christian icon Installed with a public, installed with a, with a, in a, basically it's a working shrine, consecrated ground, on public land, with public money. What exactly is the next step to that? What exactly, where would they go next? It's a scary prospect. And make no mistake, it's very deliberate, it's very well thought out, and our lawsuits are very well thought out. Now, our, the, the slide says winnable lawsuits. We intend to win all of these lawsuits. We do not file lawsuits unless we are extremely confident that they will win. Winning is important, folks. It's not about filing a lawsuit. It's about winning the lawsuit. Because when you file a lawsuit and you lose, guess what happens? The other side wins a lawsuit. That's a very bad thing. That's why we have our rights chipped away so often. That's why we lose little fights on standing. Because we are not fighting the, the suits that we can win. These are the suits that are winnable suits, in our opinion. Really hard, easy, or I should say really uh, hard and fast winnable suits. What's Kentucky? What's Kentucky? Uh, what's Kentucky? Uh, oh, you'll like Kentucky. Um, K Kentucky's great. Um, the, the Kentucky is one of those states, like all the other states, that has an Office of Homeland Security. What do you think would be the first responsibility for the State Office of Homeland Security in Kentucky? Don't answer. You'd probably say something ridiculous like protecting the citizens from terrorists. But you'd be wrong. Because in the state of Kentucky, the number one responsibility of the executive director of Homeland Security is to publicize the fact that Homeland Security is impossible without the protection of Almighty God. Yes, the second responsibility is to actually protect us from terrorists. The first responsibility is to make it religious. You know, and we're fighting religious terrorists and the last thing you hear before a religious war is, my God can beat up your God, <laughs> which is kind of what Kentucky is saying. Well, considering they both worship the same God. 
They do not worship the same God. They, politically correct, they, they try and be politically correct when they say they worship the same God. Allah and God are not the same God. Just like the Old Testament God and the New Testament God are not the same God. There's no such word, by the way, as Judeo-Christian. But that's beside the point. Um, American atheist is not just about activism. We're also about preservation of knowledge. Uh, we have one of the largest atheist free thought libraries in the country at our headquarters in Cranford, New Jersey. Uh, and uh, it's, you know, if, if you had anybody, has, has anybody seen it? Have you seen it? Well, you should come see it. Uh, it's, it it's pretty impressive. It's pretty impressive. Uh, and that's one of the things that we do. We participate in cross-movement events, Secular Coalition for America. Amanda Kneef is here. Is she here? No, she blew off my talk, didn't she? <laughs> yeah, she did. Just because she's heard it before. That's no excuse. Maybe, maybe. Uh, and of course, the Reason Rally. Um, the Reason Rally, I'm going to talk about the Reason Rally in a, in, in a couple more slides. Frankly, it is the most important event that's happening in the secular community in the near term. Uh, and it is something that really I hope you uh, all come to see. It's going to be the largest atheist event in world history. And it's going to be basically an atheist secular Woodstock on the Mall of Washington on March 23rd, March 24th rather, 2012. Um, we're going to have speakers, we're going to have music, we're going to have comedy, and we're going to have lots and lots of people. You've come to Dragon Con. Now just imagine if everybody here was an atheist. That's what kind of numbers we're looking at for Washington, D.C. It would be the largest event ever by an order of magnitude. And we're really uh, hoping that you'll all help spread the word. Local grassroots activism is another uh, area that I'm really concentrating on because activism can't prog we can't progress without grassroots. And so what we're doing is we're reinventing our affiliation program. American Atheist has always had an affiliation program, but now we're revamping it. It has become my job to grow our affiliates. It has become my job to use American Atheist money to grow affiliates. And that's what we did in the North Alabama Free Thought Association. Uh, that's what we did. Uh, we, we had a convention there with a billboard. Uh, we nearly doubled their size of paying members in one weekend. What does that mean? That means in Huntsville, Alabama right now, there is a self-sufficient activist local organization. And that's what we want everywhere. And that's what we need everywhere. And that's what we're using American Atheist money for. Uh, we do give scholarships for activism. We don't give scholarships for essays. We give scholarships to activists. We're primarily an activist organization, and we give money to activist students. Okay. If you can read this, you can't explain that. <laughs> now, I can't explain it. You can't explain it. Now, there's a, a Gandhi quote that I really love. First they ignore you, then they laugh at you, then they yell at you, then you win. I love that. Because the religious right are yelling. They're screaming. In fact, they won't even stop screaming. If I go on, they don't let me talk because they're too busy yelling. They're yelling because they're afraid. But guess what? They're not afraid of me. They're afraid of you. They're afraid of the 20 to 30 percent of the 20 to 30 crowd. They're afraid of the ones who back in the 70s and the 60s changed the country in a 20 year term. Think about how much the country changed from the 1950s to the 1970s. Who did that? The 20 to 30 crowd did that. And now here you are, here they are, with the internet, with energy, with technological savvy, with passion, with education, and access to lots and lots of information. They're afraid because they're terrorized. They're terrified. This is the thing. We don't need a revolution. 
We don't need a constitutional amendment. We need a megaphone. And you're the megaphone. That's it. This is the time and the place for the young and the energetic. The organizations are here to support you. But this entire country is going to be changed as the 20 to 30 crowd grows. Grows in power, grows in age, and grows in knowledge. And there's nothing that they can do to stop you. Nothing. These guys yell. But this guy, he's meat. And he knows it. So he yells. But it's not going to stop him. We have the timing. We have the momentum. We have the support. And we have you. And we have all your friends. And now all we need to really get this done is the activity. Speaking of which, the Reason Rally. Now I want to talk about this again. I've got these flyers up at the tables. I'd like everybody to take one, please. I would like you to put this at the top of your list for next year. It's on March 12th, March 24th, 2012. Uh, it is co-sponsored. This is not an American Atheist only event. This is 14 different organizations. American Atheists, AHA, Atheist Alliance, The Brights, Camp Quest, Center for Inquiry, Free Thought Society, James Randi. Where's Free Thought Society? Hi. <laughs> Hi, Margaret. Um, James Randi, Educational Foundation, Military Atheists and Freethinkers, some guy named Richard Dawkins, um, <laughs> the Secular Student Alliance, Secular Coalition for America, <laughs> Secular Student Alliance, oh, Secular Coalition for America, there you are. Uh, I called you out before you weren't here, you're busted. <laughs> Did, okay, all right. And United Coalition of Reason. So this is 14 different organizations are all spending to get all bending together to bring you one huge epic event. <laughs> yes. Woo. <laughs> no woo. No woo. No woo. No woo. No woo. No woo. <laughs> um, so I, I would, you know, as president of American Atheists, yes. I also want you to stay because the American Atheist National Convention follows the Reason Rally and Richard Dawkins is going to be there and Taslima Nazreen is going to be there and I want you all to come. And students get a discount of $20 and free membership. But more important than our convention is the Reason Rally. It is absolutely imperative for the growth of this movement for everybody to come and bring your friends and have a good time like I said, uh, Dawkins, Randy, uh, Dawkins, James Randy, Taslima Nasreen, uh, and PZ Myers will all be speaking along with a host of other people. There's going to be at least one band, possibly two. There's going to be comedy. It's going to be a really fun celebration. The theme is celebrating secular values. It's not a protest. It's a celebration. And you're all invited. And, and of course, by the way, it's all free. So just come. And that's at reasonrally.org. I really should show you this. Um, please help spread the word as much as you can. This is going to happen because of the buzz that y'all spread. Stay for the American Atheist National Convention. Uh, Dawkins, Myers, uh, Taslima Nazreen, and our legal director, Edwin Kagan, will be confirmed speakers. We're going to have a costume dinner. And yes, students can come to the convention cost for the convention for students is $20. And you get an American Atheist membership for free. So please come. What? Uh, right now it's $199 for the weekend. And that's, pre, that's, that's early. It's going to go up. Um, but uh, it's going to be worth it. I'm going to make sure that it's worth it for you. Final thoughts. This is my favorite picture. <laughs> Final thoughts. Um, 
Good. I'm, I'm running perfectly. I still have a few minutes to, to, for questions. Final thoughts. Closets kill movements. Please remember that. If you are in a closet, be done with that. It's time to come out. Closets are yesterday. Oh, my parents are going to be upset. Guess what? They will get over it. Oh, my boss is going to be upset. Guess what? He's probably an atheist. <laughs> and, and yeah, some of you will have bumps in the road. I've had bumps in the road. Guess what? This is how we make progress. We take our lumps. Get out of the closet. Shut the door behind you. You won't be needing it anymore. You will live a much happier life after you do. Please come out of the closet. Capitalize on the breadth of the movement. I want to talk a little bit about the breadth of the movement here. If you get a bunch of atheists in a room, like this room, there is going to be a very broad um, uh, range of ideas in that room. American atheists, like I said, we're the bulldogs, we're the marines of free thought. Some people aren't so hot with that. Some people don't like that. Some people are much more uh, accommodationistic. My point here is that, well, there's a great Ronald Reagan quote. Ronald Reagan was president for eight years. He said one thing that I agree with during those eight years. <laughs> He said, somebody who agrees with me 95% of the time is my friend. Folks, everybody in the movement is your friend. You're going to find things that you disagree with. That does not make him an enemy. It's still a friend. Maybe that person is not a best friend, but they're still friends. Capitalizing on the breadth of the movement means People are going to come in, they need to find their home, and they need to stay there. And that means that we have to put away any animosity between the movements. We, now, I'm not saying we shouldn't criticize each other when we don't agree. We shouldn't, I'm not saying that. What I am saying is that it stops there. My example. I mentioned that we're suing the World Trade Center. Some people don't like that suit. Some people have attacked me pretty hard for making that suit. They're wrong, but that's okay. But even the most virulent attacks against me have come from good guys. Okay? They're still good guys. They're just wrong about this thing. And that means they owe me a beer. My policy is no matter how much a good guy hits me or us, the worst thing that will happen is they owe me a beer. I, is Susan Jacoby here? She put out an article. She, she didn't like the lawsuit at all. Guess what? When we win, she owes me a beer. <laughs> it's not something that we can take personally. It's not something that we can over, overdo. It's not something that we can extrapolate on. We have to realize that we have a very broad movement. We have a very, we have a very small movement, but it's very broad. That means we're stretched thin. So we have to find our place and stay there. And if you stay, if you find your home, you're going to be much happier if you find the home that's right for you. So if American Atheist is good for you, if you like what I've been saying tonight, I've got membership booklets, memberships right here. Please join. If not, that's okay. The AHA is a good organization. Free Thought Society is right in back. Secular Coalition is right over there. Join them. Join someone. Find your home and stay there. Unless, of course, you want to come back. And, of course, you can join multiple organizations if you want. But don't think that anybody is bad because they're not like you. We're all friends. We're all in this together. We're all brothers in arms. Sisters. And sisters in arms. <laughs> Last word. I want you to enjoy this win, folks. 
Like I said, between the 50s and the 70s, the entire country changed all because of the young people. And the young people today have far more advantages. This is going to be an epic change in this country over the next 20 years. It's going to happen. We're going to do this. And I want you to enjoy it. I want you to relish the activism that you're going to put in and the changes that you're going to affect. I want you to sit back in 20 years. And I want you to say, ha, we did that. I did that. Because you, you're going to do that. Thank you. And we have one gentleman who's come right up for a question. So go for it. Okay, well, actually, two things. I didn't see the Colbert show, but I saw Stewart. Yeah. I don't think he was against the suit so much as the language he used, uh, the, the quote that he made. So I don't know if you have any, you know, if you would have done it differently or have any thoughts or comments on that. My second question is, in terms of the lawsuits, how do you actually do that? Do you have a legal staff or do you have volunteer lawyers or do you work with other organizations? These all seem like classic ACLU lawsuits, at least the kind they used to do, so I don't know if they've, you know, crawled away somewhere, but uh, anyway, just, uh, you know. This, you How do we do it? Yeah. Okay, so much. let me answer your second question first. Uh, we have a legal director, Edwin Kagan. He is, um, he is a volunteer legal director, but we do pay him for his time. We also have a growing network of lawyers that are either working for us on a volunteer basis or on a pay basis, and we use them. Now, Edwin Kagan um, is extremely good, epically good, at predicting which suits will fail and which suits will pass. Um, I do not want to sing single out any suits here, any specific lawsuits here, but if you can think about all the recent lawsuits that have happened uh, from the atheist movement, he has been uncanny at predicting how they would end. Um, so we're really, really happy to have him. Uh, as far as John Stewart is concerned, uh, they called me before the show, and they invited me on. And I said, yes. I said, I said you name the time, you name the place, I'll be there. You know, when Fox News calls, I'm like, all right. I'll come on, you send me a car, you do this, you, 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 you I want lunch. And, and the call from The Daily Show, they said, come. And I said, you, you name the time, you name the place, I will be there. Next day, they called me up say, we can't use you. Next day, John Stewart comes out with this. He takes one quote. By the way, did you notice that it was one quote that had nothing to do at all with the lawsuit? Yeah, yeah. yeah nothing to do with it. It was a completely true statement. You know, the whole concept that God loved us so much that after he just did nothing while the showers felt, he gave us a cross. I think that's ridiculous. It is ridiculous. So I said that. What, what's very disturbing to me, and I just found this out last night, and those of you who are following my Twitter, uh, Mr. Atheist Pants, um, We'll, we'll know that it, I, I learned yesterday that John Stewart is on the board of directors of the World Trade Center Memorial, mm -hmm. okay. which changes a yeah. whole lot. Yeah. Um, and it really disappoints me that he would come out on his show on a national forum and bash the lawsuit. I don't mind if he bashed the lawsuit. I don't. I, I don't mind being. You know, I don't mind dis, 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 I don't mind dissent, but when you mask, when you forget to tell everybody that you have a conflict of interest, right. when you forget to say everybody, oh, I hate this lawsuit, which kind of indirectly is directed at me, I think I have a problem with that. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm challenging John Stewart, and I'll challenge him right here on screen. Uh, we have to talk. Uh, he did bad. Yeah. He misled his he misled his audience. 
Right. Uh, and <laughs> so, so would I change my words? No. No, my, my words were correct. And uh, I think uh, we just have to realize that Jon Stewart is a comedian and not a news source. Uh, and just back to the second, I mean, is the ACLU doing these kind of suits now, or is it pretty much shifted to like organizations like yours? The ACLU is doing their suits. Uh, Americans United is helping us in uh, the Utah case. Um, but uh, we're running the show. Uh, the ACLU is doing suits that, you know, they're, they're kind of shying away from the atheist-specific suits or the separation of church and state suits. I don't know why, but they are, and we certainly have no problem working with them. Uh, but we only, like I said, we have a very, very strict policy on what suits we take, on what lawsuits we take. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Hi. Howdy. Uh, Tilt the mic up. There sorry. You uh, so you've talked about the, our, our growing movement, especially amongst the uh, 20 to 30 year olds, but how would you address mobilizing that 20? to 30 percent of ah. the 20 to 30 year olds, especially since so many of them seem to be of the apatheist, you know, the, the apathetic. The apatheists? Look, I, I think the apatheists are going to um, evolve. I really do. Um, but I'm not going to waste my time with them right now. Okay? If, if you don't care, I don't have time to waste on you. Just like I don't have time to waste on trying to convert theists. If you actually don't care that your civil rights are in danger, if you don't care that your kids are going to be taught God did it is science, if you don't care, I don't have time to deal with you. What I do have time to deal with is getting the people who do care to do something. And the way we're doing that is we're working with the Secular Student Alliance, we're working with the local grassroots groups, and we're just telling as many people as we can, well, first of all, the Reason Rally is going to be a rallying cry in the first place. It's all going to be about empowerment. It's all going to be about giving people a, a selection of organizations from which they can choose to be active. But if you're out there, if you, if you are wondering what you can do, the answer is do anything. Anything you want. Write blogs. Um, contribute. To, to other people's blogs, write letters to the editor, start a group, go to a group. Um, anything that you can possibly imagine, but do whatever you like. Do whatever you want to do. Because we don't want you burning out. We don't want you getting ticked off. We don't want you getting tired. We want you doing what you love for the movement as much as possible for as long as possible. And if everybody just does what they want, which is something other, as opposed to nothing, then we're doing fine. And we're going to win hands down. Bill O'Reilly is meat. He's really, t he's toast. Um, but the apatheists, if they don't follow, if they don't learn, you know, maybe something that uh, uh, an atheist activist can do as a young person is find some apatheists and slap them upside the head. I've been trying. Because we have some serious, serious problems in this country, and apathy is one of them. All right, and we have one minute and 22 seconds left, so we're going to leave early. Rock and roll. Thank you very much for coming, everybody. Come to the Reason Rally. Join American Atheists.